What is going on, everybody? I am your host, Slackers, bringing you another... Uh, I don't even really have a name for this series, but just another Smash Bros. DLC discussion, speculation sort of video. Actually, it's not really speculation, just a discussion. So basically, I will take... I do one of these episodes, um, you know, every so often. So last week we did two. I did Crash Bandicoot, and I did Doom Slayer. And then I kind of broke down the character, kind of who they are, and kind of a little bit of their history, and why they might make sense for Smash Bros. DLC going into the future. So, um, yeah, today we're back doing Monster Hunter, well, the Hunter from Monster Hunter, uh, more specifically the one from Marvel vs. Cap Capcom Infinite, wow, speak words here, but, um, yeah, so we're going to talk about the character, kind of try to make a case why this character actually might be a legit chance and might actually work in the game, so uh, let's get into it, but actually right before I, I'm not going to reference any sort of you know, quote unquote leaks that have been happening or rumors as of late, uh, because they're always flying around. It's Smash Bros. There, it's always it's always rumor season. So I know a few rumors I seen uh, were saying, yeah, Monster Hunters in the the Fighter Pass. Yeah, y yeah, right. I'll believe it once I actually see it from Nintendo themselves. But anyway, let's move on to uh, to the video. All right. So first up. Why Monster Hunter? Why why the Monster Hunter series in this case? Why, well, I mean, the Monster Hunter series is, in fact, one of Capcom's most popular and successful series to date. You know, alongside other series such as, like, uh, Mega Man and, uh, you know, Resident Evil, to name a few. So they got, they got quite a bit. Monster Hunter is right up there with them. Uh, so it's a very well-established series, especially in Japan. It was for the longest time. And then uh, most recently with, uh, I guess you could kind of say the 3DS title uh, in the in the, uh, in the U.S. Uh, what was that? Uh, Monster Hunter, was that Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, I think, for the 3DS that really started making the uh, the series here in uh, the United States really just started kind of booming with popularity and uh, it has become one of uh, Capcom's biggest franchises. So, uh, you know, and plus they... The Monster Hunter series, like I just said with the 3DS title, they have a bunch of games on Nintendo platforms. So I know that's always a, uh, a factor you gotta, you know, well, factor in. Uh, is the game, is the series actually on Nintendo? Uh, is it going to be something coming out in the future that they could try to, you know, promote with, you know, Smash DLC and the new Monster Hunter game? Maybe that's something that gets taken into a factor. But, uh, you know, so... Uh, games that I'm thinking of, uh, like Monster Hunter 3 Try, I believe that was on the Nintendo Wii, so you got that, uh, then of course the uh, aforementioned Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate on the 3DS, which was a very big, very huge success, so, um, and then to name a couple, others, wasn't there like Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, and then Monster Hunter Generations, so they've had quite a few different, uh, you know, games across uh, Nintendo platforms, and uh, it's probably going to continue into the future. And they do have the Monster Hunter, uh, the Iceborne DLC, which, well, that's not on the Switch. But, uh, yeah, that's it, it, shaping up to be a pretty big uh, DLC for the series. So hopefully, you know, for the fans uh, and Capcom, it does very well. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. Moving on, let's talk about appearance. And, you know, what, what in fact, which hunter would they actually use for the character? So in Monster Hunter games... The actual hunter itself is pretty much, it just acts like an avatar more than in, you know, the actual character. It's not a, you know, set in stone. It's not a real character. It's just somebody for you to kind of play around as. So why would the Marvel versus Capcom Infinite Monster Hunter make a lot of sense? Well, appearance-wise, um, little fact, uh, female, and I think that's something that uh, is... Pretty much, I mean, so far it's kind of lacking. Yeah, we have Kazooie, but I'm talking about, like, a straight-up, legit, solo female character. And this iteration of the Monster Hunter, Hunter, <laughs> would be uh, would be perfect. Uh, it's, it's very well known. Uh, it is, in fact, um, uh, one, uh, it's an actual, an original character for the most part. It was, what, this character is pretty much made just for the Marvel vs. Capcom game. And... This character actually has a fully fledged voice acting. So, uh, if I know my facts right, and if I'm wrong, feel free to tell me in the comments. 
But I don't think the other Monster Hunters, unless Monster Hunter World does. I don't know about World. Never played it. But uh, if, you know, I don't think there's any other Monster Hunter Hunters like the Avatar. I don't think they really have actual, you know, lines and, you know, dialogue and fully fledged out voice acting. So, I mean, that could kind of be a point for this character. You already have a voice. I mean, it's one of the few characters that would actually have a voice to go along with the character. So you got, uh, you got that as just something easier to come up with than trying to you know maybe have somebody come in and do a brand new voice for the very first time for a character which might be a little weird for some people of the franchise but uh there's a lot of good things going for the appearance so yeah the marvel versus capcom infinite one probably makes the most sense so up next uh, let's talk about the move set how does the move set work well um going back to marvel versus capcom infinite here that's a fighting game so you got a lot you can take uh, reference from in that game Plus, I mean, Monster Hunter, they have all sorts of uh, weapons and just sort of different attacks that you can do because the series is all about going out and defeating these monsters and then, you know, building up armor and more weapons and then going to defeating more powerful, uh, you know, enemies and that sort of stuff. So you could really do some cool sort of stuff. So a few things that kind of popped into my head. So the first one uh, would be the Golem Blade. Uh, that's pretty much simple. I mean, isn't that what the... Uh, MVCI characters and that what she's wielding. I'm pretty sure I could be wrong again, but uh, so Golem Blade pops into my head. Uh, what else? Oh, Dual Blades. Uh, something like that would make a pretty fun little sort of fast sort of attacking, uh, you know, a character. I think, uh, you know, Dual Blades would be kind of fun. We don't really have really much of any like dual wielding sort of characters in Smash Bros. So you could do some pretty cool stuff uh, with that. And plus, Another cool thing, the ice bow. I mean, or I guess the ice steel bow if you want to go there. So, yeah, uh, you got both. You got ranged attacks potentially for a uh, moveset. And, then of course, you got melee attacks. Uh, you could Obviously, you can do a lot of stuff with swords, with slashes and jabs and, you know, up attack, whatever it might be. You know, thrusting a sword up or down. Or the, the dual blades maybe. I don't know, maybe if you throw them. I don't know why you'd throw them. Never mind. But, uh, you know, uh, the dual blades maybe could, like, spin around in place. You know, do a, like, full 360 circle and you spin around. And, obviously, it would cover everything around the character. Very simple. Then the ice bow, obviously, you got ranged attack. So, moveset, um, the character is pretty much already equipped with a bunch of stuff you can use. So, perfect, right? If you already got a moveset, I think that just gives another point in favor for the character. After all, if you can come up with stuff that's already just ready-made, uh, DLC and development should be a bit easier instead of kind of trying to sit there and come up with something that, all right, maybe this could work, maybe it doesn't, we'll see what happens. But yeah, moveset, very easy to come up with. So this could kind of be a point in favor as well. So uh, we already know that Banjo-Kazooie is going to be the next DLC character in Smash Bros., so, after that, we know there are two more slots in the Fighter Pass, Character Pack 4 and Character Pack 5. We don't know who they are, but odds are, when was the last Nintendo Direct? Was that E3, right? So, you typically Nintendo does Directs every, what, two to three months? And since we're sitting here pretty much at the end of August and still no word of a Nintendo Direct, uh, maybe a safe bet would be there's going to be a Nintendo Direct coming out in September. What else happens to come out in September? The Monster Hunter Iceborne DLC. Now, again, I know the DLC is not on Switch, but Nintendo could use that to kind of, sort of, in a way, tie in a Monster Hunter DLC announcement for Smash Bros. So, you know, build off the hype and the, you know, the, the overall buzz of the new DLC and then be like, oh yeah, by the way, Monster Hunter, the Hunter, the Monster Hunter character will be playable in Smash. Just a tease for the next character because, uh, Banjo's probably coming out roughly soon, and then uh, we we got to know who's next after Banjo. So, yeah, I mean that's just kind of a little point that I thought of. But uh, now let's talk other DLC that would come with the character. So again, the individual fighter pack uh, obviously comes with a character, and then you got music tracks and stages. Uh, I don't know any Monster Hunter tracks by their name, but uh, they got some pretty decent music that I, you know, at least I think so. And I've barely played the franchise, but I've heard some uh, music tracks, so Monster Hunter music, obviously, that has to come in. But um, wh what else would you see? So let's uh, talk about spirits for a second. So uh, some potential spirits that come to mind immediately 
would be the Palicos and what I had, like the Mario and the Luigi one because I mean those were like specific sort of uh, you know fun little bonuses for uh, one of the Monster Hunter games so I could see that potentially being uh, a spirit that you could see obviously maybe you could do it maybe like a tag team a duo or just individual Palico Mario costume and a Palico Luigi one or like I said you could put them both together in like a duo something or what whatever uh, you could also you do a few of the uh, uh, more well-known, uh, I guess, iconic sort of monsters from the Monster Hunter series. Like, is it Tigrex or Tigrex, whatever you want to pronounce it. And then uh, what about, like, Nargakuga? You could also do that. So you got some pretty interesting monsters you could turn into some spirit fights. Um, plus, um, we, you got to talk about the stage as well. What kind of stage? Uh, something that came to mind for me would be the Ancient Forest, just because it kind of ties in with Rathalos. And, I mean, it's still in the Monster Hunter game. So, you know, we already have Rathalos in the game, so why not maybe sort of tie in Monster Hunter with, you know, the character with the actual Monster Hunter content we already have in Smash? Ancient Forest? Why not? I mean, that, it could really work. It really could work. So, uh, plus, me outfits. There always seems to be uh, more me outfits that get added with each uh, new... DLC fighter, and I'm not saying they have to be series specific, but we could get new uh, spirits, or we could even get maybe some older Monster Hunter spirits like we did from Smash Wii U and 3DS, so that's always a possibility as well. But I do feel like I have to bring up one negative about this whole thing, uh, and it's it's a little bit of a, you know, it, it's it kind of tying me up a little bit. So th what it is is... Back in, what was that, around the Game Awards, when Reggie fils said that the DLC will be all new representation to the series. Now, we don't exactly, I mean, you can kind of infer from that what you want, but we don't know exactly what he meant. Does he mean it's going to be new representation as in just a new playable character that we've never seen before? Which would be kind of weird because everyone was already here for the main roster and is like, alright, obviously we're going to have new representation. Or is it going to be series that have never been in Smash Bros. before? So would that kind of rule Monster Hunter out since we already had Rathalos with the, you know, being a boss and assist trophy? Does that rule out anything Monster Hunter related? Potentially. I think it could. But, uh, yeah, we're just not sure really what uh, Reggie really did mean by that. I mean, yeah, <laughs> just new representation to the series. I mean, yeah, you could take that kind of anyway. New representation as just a playable fighter. Maybe new representation as in never been in Smash Bros. before. So who knows what that really meant. Um, let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments. Uh, but yeah, that's what I got for today. Uh, plus Capcom. Capcom and Nintendo work very well together. They do. And odds are Capcom probably gets a rep in uh, DLC. Probably. I, I, I highly think so. I mean, a lot of people are kind of thinking Bandai and Capcom... So, it could be the last two potentially for the companies, maybe Activision with Crash or Spyro or something, but uh, yeah, Monster Hunter I think has a pretty legit chance just with the relationship Monster Hunter or uh, Capcom and Nintendo have, but uh, yeah, that is going to be it for this one. Uh, we should have another one tomorrow, no idea what character I'm doing yet, but I'll figure that out in time. But anyway, that is it, I hope you guys enjoyed, and hopefully we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out everybody.